Hi there everyone, welcome to your daily dose at home at the Calgary Zoo. My name is Jen and I'm a proud member of the education team here. Today we're going to talk about tools. Now these may not look like tools you're familiar with, but we're going to get to that, I promise. So in the daily dose today, you would have learned about our awesome macaque troop. Macaques are famous tool users. Uh, they will build small ponds to wash their sweet potatoes in. Uh, they'll sometimes take hair from tourists to floss their teeth. Uh, they'll use hammer stones to break open crabs or break open shells or sharp stones to shuck oysters. No discussion about tool use in animals would be complete without talking about Dr. Jane Goodall, iconic ethologist, UN messenger of peace, dame of the British Empire, and very good hugger. Uh, I had the honor of working with Jane Goodall before I came to the zoo, and I'd love to tell you a little bit of her story. Her story starts, as any great story might, with a young girl who had a dream. A dream about moving to Africa and working with animals. Fast forward a few years and she realized that dream. She had moved to Africa and met famous paleoanthropologist, Dr. Louis Leakey, who believed that studying our closest living relatives, the great apes, might give insight into humanity. So he asked Jane if she would go and study chimpanzees. So in 1960, at the age of 26, and with her mom as a chaperone, she stepped foot in what is now Gombe Stream National Park in Tanzania. Now she spent a lot of time watching the chimpanzees there. She wasn't a trained scientist, but she had a clear mind, a lot of passion, a lot of curiosity, and was very determined. So she spent time watching the troop, and as you might expect, the chimps weren't having it. They ran away from her as often as they could, um, and she kept it up, she kept looking around. And then one day in the fall of 1960, a fateful day, there was one chimpanzee who Jane had named David Greybeard. And he saw something in Jane. And he allowed her to watch him while he was eating some termites. And he was sitting at the mound and he was using some, some long grass to fish for termites. And she observed him a little bit later and he was using a stick. So not quite this stick, but a stick like this that he had actually pulled the leaves off of. And he would put it in the termite stick and fish for termites. Termites would grab onto the stick and he would bite them off. So this was something that Jane had observed that no one else had. This was an animal making tools. Up until then, science believed that only humans made tools. In fact, that Dr. Louis Leakey that we were talking about, five years earlier, he and his wife Mary had discovered this human ancestor. This is Homo habilis. Habilis in Latin means handy or able. So this is the handyman. And this was thought to be the, the first human ancestor that used tools. We know now that there was an older older ancestor that also used tools, but at the time, this is what they thought. So humans were the tool makers. Animals were not tool makers. So Jane sent a telegram to Louis Leakey telling, her of, telling him of, of her discovery, and he wrote back and said in the telegram, now we must redefine tool, redefine man, or accept chimpanzees as humans. So from that day, Jane is considered the woman who redefined man, or perhaps more appropriately, the human who redefined humanity. Now it might seem intuitive that our closest relatives use tools. Gorillas will use sticks often to check the depth while, while they're walking to check the depth of water. Orangutans will make whistles out of, out of leaves to ward off predators. And we've talked about our macaques, but there are also a lot of other animals outside of the primate world that use tools. Elephants have been observed making a plug for watering holes. So they'd pull some bark off a tree, chew it up, and plug a watering hole so that they don't lose any of the water. It doesn't evaporate. Otters have been observed using hammer stones to break open shells. Even octopuses have been observed carrying around half of a coconut. And when predators arrive or when something, when something shows up that startles them, they'll hide under the coconut. So animal tool use isn't restricted to just primates. It is in all over the animal kingdom. So take a look at the at-home activity. I want you to match tools with the animals that might use them. And take a look around for other similarities that we might share with other animals. Thank you for supporting wildlife conservation. Have a lovely day.